Bitcoin because Bitcoin had a move last night and um, it dropped under the 8300 point which is perfect short term now I'm looking for us to get ultimately under 8000 uh, this is very key um, for us to get under 8000 and I have this already all planned out. I, I've seen the scenarios and I can go back in the charts. I add the combinatorial values and statistics. It, this chart makes perfect sense. And um, so here are two scenarios I'm going to throw at you. You can see the high volume that we've had here spike on the drop. Now what's likely to occur is we're going to drop back down and then pull all the way back up, probably up to here or likely even the highs up here. That's the highest statistic of occurring. That's the first scenario. Now, if that occurs, that's actually very bearish. Even if we went higher and went up to the highs and whatnot, that is bearish. Um, that is something that would uh, go out uh, in the months ahead as being negative. Uh, second scenario, which is the bullish one, and that's if we drop under the 8,000 and even down to the 6,000 range down over here uh, ultimately and just make a straight beeline move downwards. That is actually very bullish coming for the months ahead. And you're going to say, why? That seems, uh, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't make, that's not intuitively the way it should work, right? Well, that's logic for you. Um, it's not things that are often intuitive don't you know statistically make sense uh, that's why people like to buy high and sell low <laughs> um, so uh, if we get that move all the way down to here on this from here from just the drops that we've had uh, that would not be unheard of there's a good statistic that we can bounce all the way back up here um, so I've got that all planned out now, uh, so we're going to wait to see what happens because that's going to give us a longer term picture of what's likely to occur going out in the future. Um, now, I've been asked about some other charts. Well, I'm going to do Chevron real fast. Chevron is very easy. Uh, it's got bullish momentum right now, but ultimately I'm looking for it to get back under $80. It's left this butterfly. It had its first move up here. Boom, went up. Boom, went up two, and now it's on number three, and it's tr it's becoming smaller and smaller. It's more congested. So this is showing uh, distribution to me, and I can tell by the movement and uh, the prices. So it's just a matter of time before you get a, a big pullback, and this is the logical area going all the way under 80. Nothing has changed on this chart. Um, it was a fantastic buy on one that drops and, and whatnot, and, um, as was silver. Silver was probably my favorite. But um, as you see, you know, it ran all the way down to the $11 range. And this is my favorite position to hold going long out term outward. Um, I've moved a lot of the profits I've taken off of the stocks now. I put into, uh, um, into this area into the, the, uh, as a hedge of inflation, basically, because I see that coming. And uh, I'm move stuff to the cash to the sidelines and I'm also moving it more into crypto I'm moving more away from stocks and moving more money into crypto and, and uh, the uh, the metals market and uh, I'm going to prepare myself in the years ahead for an inflationary type of environment um, so there are going to be some trading opportunities there but I won't go on to what they're going to be I'm looking for silver to go all the way back up to the 19 area up here um, there's one chart that uh, is an example that's very much like silvers and that is uh, beyond meats and we can see what this one did and I kind of had knew one person who traded this very early and they they exited very early and they didn't want to wait longer term for this up here but that's okay I mean this was likely to occur in time this is the same type of chart that Bitcoin made right if we remember and uh, the same type of movement, very manipulated. This, with the news and everything, this was very, very manipulated. But it's going to pull back likely from up this, these levels here all the way and close this gap all the way down here and likely even 
go back to the 80s range. Um, so Beyond Meat, there you go with that one. Now let's go to my favorites, AMD, pulled back to under 50. This was a short from the mid to high um, 50 range. And this made perfect sense and it did exactly what it was supposed to and pulled all the way back down to here and closed the shorts as they went back under 50. So it's just a hedge um, trade really, just like Tesla. Let's gonna go to Tesla. Overall long term, I would be looking out in the future for it to go to the 80s and above. Um, AMD has a really bright future with their their chips and so forth and there's some macro uh, elements that can give them even a further boost uh, with uh, people buying computers, believe it or not. Uh, with this coronavirus, people needed to get new computers and that's been a big thing. They've been upgrading, so that's a good um, good combination of events. And AMD has made some really fantastic uh, leaps in their chip technology, so that behooves them. Um, and they're becoming popular with gamers, believe it or not. Gamers are like all over and they're paying premium prices, which AMD is not used to, so their balance sheet should really explode. But anyway, let's get to my other favorite, Tesla of which I'm 80% short, nothing has changed. We had one short-term pattern. I did trade this right here and bought some down here. And uh, again, if it goes up to 900, I'm going to be one-to-one -one short, okay? So from here, if it goes up to there, one-to-one -one short, and then I'd be looking for the move down to 600. I think it'll probably truncate somewhere under that and then make the move down. But I'm not going to predict that because right now there's a lot of unknowns uh, in the marketplace. I don't know how much money the Fed has pumped out and I don't know what type of effects that's going to have. Uh, if they have a lot of liquidity, they can do some really strange shit to the markets. And I have to kind of prepare for that possibility. Um, where things don't really make sense, but I am looking for us to make that move back down to 600. It's very logical. Um, Elon Musk even came out and said that this was overpriced, right? So um, there you go. Uh, I agree with him. <laughs> uh, but uh, they still have a fantastic future. So in the years ahead, I expect you know much higher prices. But I'm still going to look for that 600 and under it makes sense. But okay, now I'm going to stop saying but. Why do I keep saying that? Um, so let's go back to the crypto market. We can see Ethereum. I want to switch to Ethereum. You see the big drop it had here. Now this was lagging the whole time um, with Bitcoin. So this was showing negative divergence and it created some really ugly, uh, this type of a block pattern that I see right here with the volume, nemic, nemic volume. Um, was very obvious and then we had the drop and uh, made perfect sense. Um, I am going to uh, to go over and find out, I have to find out some more information. Again, this is related to Zigli, so I can't even say anything because I'm not sure, but um, we'll see. Uh, let's go to BNB. BNB had a big drop all the way back down to 14. Um, if it goes under a certain level, all the way down to the 13 range, I will likely become a buyer. I have a trade set up that I see perfectly on this chart that makes good sense, but I'm gonna wait for Bitcoin to do its thing first. Um, there are some short-term trades I'd like to make on Bitcoin, and I'm just gonna wait for the setups. But again, I I'm caught in the signally mess and uh, you know I have this buy zone all the way down here again I'm looking for under the 8k uh, it statistically it makes sense and I'm gonna look for that to occur and there's not really much to talk about because I'm kinda stuck now let's get back to signaling and I'll give me one second and I'll talk a little bit about that and, and I'll show you the issues that we're having um, with that because they're pretty Pretty much a pain in the ass to really have to deal with but anyway one second and I'm gonna go over some of the issues that we have with them and we hope they get resolved because this is a great platform this has everything that you could possibly want the foundation is there 
if these guys, these little kids, I'll show you who they are, um, can figure it out. Uh, and now, I don't know the challenges they have. I don't have their code base. I can tell a few things, though. Uh, first, this was modified off of their spot trading platform that they originally designed. Because when, for example, this is a short, right, that we have here, position from 94.75, that should be in green, but it shows up in red. All right, so that's a big indicator right there. Why would that happen? Well, if you're in a, a spot position and uh, you're at 94.75 and all you have is long, right, because it's a spot account, all you can do is buy. Uh, it's going to appear as red if, if the price is lower. And it's currently 8700 around there. So that tells you that uh, this was originally not made to go over and trade futures, and they're trying to amend it. And that kind of tells me that this is not their code. Uh, this is somebody else's code, and they're repackaging it, looking to sell it and uh, make money off of it. And they probably don't even understand what they have. Uh, or how to program it, and they're tinkering with it, trying to figure it out. Um, and it kind of comes across that way because uh, the other thing is they're not traders. They don't understand anything about trading. And that is also very concerning. Uh, they don't have anybody on their team that actually knows trading. That sucks. So anyway, here's the short that we have on here. Now, to their credit, the spot side works perfectly. No issues at all. Um, but let's go here and let me show you the issue that we have and I'm trying to be transparent and let you know and it's not to say they won't figure this out you know and uh, but their attitude kind of sucks and if they're they don't have any adult supervision or leadership um, they might just never do this never fix it all right so this has just gone to a blank screen so as you can see let's reload it and uh, see if it pops up now yeah okay now it pops up so the first thing that we're going to notice is that over here it's gone over and it likes to add this which you know this is ridiculous that it even turns this on so this actually is another bug that they have to fix um, but let's get to the how I could amend and maybe overcome this but this is a giant pain in the ass for me and I don't know if it's really worth my time Let, let's go over and um, take a look at increasing position size. This is what I did to go over and, and double my trade from 88.30, I think it was. Um, I entered another trade at 88.40, so I clicked on increase position size. And I typed in 98.40, 10%, boom. Now, do you notice that this doesn't have a, another field down here called exit? So you can't discern the individual uh, trade with the individual price doesn't let you do that but it has a field over here take profits that lets you split your targets for additional exits and entry um, exits and so forth for your your take profit um, so I should be able to here enter multiple exit points right wrong they really don't allow you to have more than one and when you do have an exit target and you do increase your position and like the one that I had at 8300 so you guys understand what happened and why I went over and turned this field off is because the take profit went over and averaged up so when I entered it at uh, 9840 uh, and my original was 8840 it averaged the the take profit and raised the, the, the target so instead of being 8300 where my original exit was it raised it like to 8,500 or something like that. So it averaged out the, the target and changed the price because it only understands to um, uh, work with the, inter, uh, the single position. Now, the reason why that could be, and you have to understand, I'm, I'm from an engineering background and I have programming experience because you have to have that in school. It's just what we did. We learned Pascal, C++, and um, that was part of computer science and that was um, also by minor so you know um, besides math you know I had to go over and do programming and I understand some of the elements now programmers can they can do their code in all different variations it's kind of like art so you can be an abstract artist you could be a, a, a cubist you know 
all the, you could be into oil pain. It, it goes, it spans the gambit. But there are certain things you need to have paint and you need to have a brush or you, you need certain elements that um, are unified and in programming that, that is doubly so. Um, so when I go over and I look at this and I think to myself, what could be the issues? Uh, the, the biggest one that sticks out is besides the, this being a product that they're trying to amend and repackage and it's not really theirs, um, is the fact that they don't use internal tables um, and uh, modules of uh, uh, ledgers. Um, so basically these blockchain guys, which is funny, I'm going to go to their pictures and show you this, uh, they're not using their their code base to go over and off put their order so uh, I could create a table and say okay this is my functionality my function and I'm gonna go over and buy at this price and um, link this to this module which would let me sell at that price and then send it out to um, Binance and to their their code to execute the trade on a digital basis that means that table would handle all the orders internally on their side. They probably don't have that. And what they're doing is they're uh, executing the call functions uh, in some short modified way to go over and go up to Binance and say, okay, um, uh, what's the total sum? What do we have? So therefore, when they do that, they're seeing a single position which registers on Binance, if that makes sense to you. And they're not able to execute the trade because they're using their own Binance's internal call functions. And maybe they don't know them. Um, I mean, if they're showing a short that's in profit as red, well, stuff like that is basic. They, that kind of tells me they don't, uh, they're, they're way behind the, they're, I don't know what to say. But that's just what I can deduce, um, you know, and my programming is from years back and, and is somewhat limited. You know, I have worked with programmers to create products, so trading, um, and I understand how they they function and their logic that they use, and they're super antisocial and should never be front facing with the customer or even communicate with the outside world. They're better off stuck in a room somewhere and kept away from the general public, is what I can tell you. But anyway, that's the issue that we're currently facing. So I can't have multiple uh, targets now. That what I can do to fix this. And it's kind of a shitty um, way to fix it is here. Uh, I would go to the trading terminal, uh, not really the trading terminal. Well, yeah, uh, I would choose spot and I would choose spot here. Uh, and then I would go over and enter a price and I could say, let's say 8,300, right? 10% create a buy order to counteract the positions that I have on the sell side. Because the sell side does work, right? But you know, it, uh, what's my exit? I don't really have an exit. I don't want to exit the whole position. I don't want to, you know, and I can't enter exit uh, parts of it because it doesn't allow for multiple orders. So I can create a head, you know, a, a built-in hedge. But the problem is, what if I don't have a, a sell target for this eighty-three hundred? Then all I'm doing is doubling my costs of the trades. If that makes sense to you. So instead of having the exit on the futures, I'd have to have both um, an entry on the, the spot to go against the there to hedge. And if I don't have an exit on the there, then I'm just doubling the trade. And it really doesn't really make sense to do that. You're increasing your costs, which I really hate doing. You know, I'm profit oriented. That would be, you know, but I could do that. That's really sloppy. That's a sloppy thing to have to do because the the future side does not work. And they don't like hearing that. You know what they went over and responded? These little kids. Um, uh, here, let me go over and show you. Let me show you their pictures. Oh, team. Here you go. So these little kids, Bart, you know, really like Bart Simpson. But look at them. They're children. They're little kids. And they have no trading knowledge or experience whatsoever. They remind me of the three commas type of people that have a crap product that is really not usable. But they sell it so they can make money off of crypto users. That's pretty sad. It's too bad because they, what they have in their base foundation is a really good product that they can 
and turn into something that would be fantastic, but uh, they don't have the leadership or the knowledge to do so, it seems. Uh, it comes across to me. Um, so anyway, they're all in Spain. They're all localized in one situated area. And if I look at their bios and so forth, all I see are people from the marketing and blockchain space and engineering programming, basically. Um, so that's all these people have. Uh, not only are the, the co-founders and so forth, uh, they have no trading knowledge. If they missed that having multiple positions execute uh, or did not know to uh, create uh, a ledger on the side of the code, it's either they don't know, the, they got this as a package solution already and they're trying to adapt it um, or... Um, they really have no knowledge of trading at all, unfortunately. Uh, so that's the issue that I have. And that's all I can deduce from outside. And this is my own thinking and, and opinion. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate. They really should get an adult that can run their company because these guys are not going to do it. They're programmers, these two especially. Uh, and uh, everybody else are marketers and... Uh, it's just a shit show uh, is the only way I could put it right now. And uh, for them to, to not understand that they've got a Ferrari, it's a beautiful car. I, I, I love what they have, but it has no engine. And they're not working on the engine. They're working on the muffler. They want to go work on the muffler or the tires, but they don't care about the engine. It doesn't matter. And they don't see it that their car isn't going to move. <laughs> And that's really fucked up. And that's what it is when you don't have multiple positions or control of. And uh, you can't even correctly I, uh, show the, the correct profit and loss of the, the positions on the future side. So that's just sad. And maybe it's just they're just not, I, I don't know what to say. It, it doesn't look good. Um, it's very unprofessional. And, and uh, you know, they, they're not traders. And uh, you're creating a trading product and you're not traders. That's really messed up. But anyway, um, that's it for my video. I hope you have an understanding now. I want to be transparent. Uh, that is also, I, let me be, not be too negative. I mean, maybe they'll figure this out, maybe, uh, but it's it's hard for me to, uh, to be positive. And, and the only other thing I could do is that whole strange spot versus Futures, I, I do that normally, but I actually have targets when I enter a buy on a, the spot side. I'm not just buying, uh, you know, I actually have a target. You know, I'm not just buying to negate a position. Um, it would be weird. Uh, but if you get me. And that's basically it. So, um, you know, we'll talk about this later in the week and figure it out and but, uh, yeah, we don't want this to keep on going and going. Uh, this is rigmarole. I'm done. I'm done being in limbo. So we're going to decide. We're going to come to a point. I'm not going to let this go on much longer. So, anyway, I'll talk to you guys later in the week. And I'll see you soon. Have a good week.